Maria Maria, I also wanted to ask you about the role of the Colombian mercenaries in the assassination two weeks ago of the Haitian president, Jovenel Moïse. Uh, the Washington Post has reported some of the Colombians had received U.S. military training while they were part of the Colombian Armed Services. Uh, one of the mercenaries has been identified as former Special Commando Grosso Guarín. A reporter, Dan Cohen, has written that Grosso was once assigned to Colombia's urban anti-terrorist special force group, a secretive elite military detachment uh, dedicated to supposedly counterterrorism operations and carrying out kidnappings and assassinations. Another one of Colombian mercenaries uh, that was arrested in Haiti was Francisco Eladio Uribe Ochoa, who was once investigated for his role in executing civilians in Colombia, then disguising them as combatants, a uh, practice known as false positive, uh, a practice um, th they were dressed then as uh, dressed up as FARC. The Colombian military uh, has been accused of killing over 6,400 civilians in this way. Cohen writes, quote, this gruesome practice helped military commanders reach lofty kill count quotas set by the U.S. and was incentivized with bonus pay and vacation time for soldiers who carried out the killings. Now, again, two of these men, uh, Colombian mercenaries um, arrested uh, in Haiti. And, of course, the number of Colombian mercenaries involved in the assassination, it's believed to be more than 20. Can you comment on this? Yeah, the specifics and the role that the Colombian mercenaries played in the assassination is still unclear. There's a lot of uh, muddied reports as the investigation begins to unfold in Haiti and here in Colombia, reports trickling out. Uh, essentially, what this is, is an example of what one retired sergeant who's been, spent 20 years in counterterrorism, counter narcotics work here in Colombia, he, he was interviewed in El Espectador on Sunday. Interesting interview, which was mind boggling to hear the details of that. What he referred to as the producto de exportación con alta solicitud, an export product in high demand, which is essentially those thousands of Colombian soldiers, officers, et cetera, who over the last 20 years, specifically after Plan Colombia was implemented and Plan Patriota, which was Uribe's continuation of Plan Colombia, a, a hyper-militarization of the country, a doubling of the size of the military, and essentially trained and built on these counter-terrorism, counter-narcotics uh, operations, um, uh, the kind of the high-value target, uh, uh, you know, extraction types of tactics um, that is, is, you know, we're talking about thousands of soldiers who've been going around the, around the world to the United Arab Emirates, to, to uh, Afghanistan, to Iraq. These are highly trained, highly disciplined uh, soldiers uh, of war. You know, they're, they're artists of war, and they're being used around the country. You, you know, like Cuba uses, sends, sends med medical uh, practitioners, doctors around the world. Uh, Colombia is sending these uh, soldiers who actually talk about how they very often don't have enough after retiring in their pensions to uh, support their families. So they have these highly lucrative contracts for two or three years and go all over the world and carry out similar operations. Well, uh, so this is essentially a reflection of that export product that uh, is coming out of Colombia. Well, Mario, we want to thank you very much for being with us. Mario Murillo, award-winning journalist who's followed Colombia for decades. Um, uh, his books include Colombia and the United States, War and Rest and Destabilization. Maria del Rosario Arango, thank you for joining us from Cali. As we turn now to Haiti, we will speak with a Haitian pro-democracy advocate about the latest developments in Haiti two weeks after the assassination of the president. Stay with us.
FX twin. Here on Democracy mm. Now!, I'm Amy Goodman with Juan González. Dr. Ariel Henry has become Haiti's new prime minister. He was sworn into office Tuesday, a day after the acting prime minister, Claude Joseph, announced he was relinquishing power. Henry, who is a neurosurgeon, was appointed by President Jovenel Moïse shortly before he was assassinated on July 7. Both Joseph and Henry had claimed power following Moïse's death. Over the weekend, the United States and other members of the so-called core group threw its support behind uh, Dr. Henri, who will become Haiti's seventh prime minister in four years. Claude Joseph will stay in the new government as foreign minister. On Monday, State Department spokesperson Ned Price defended the Biden administration's decision to back Henri. He was questioned by the Associated Press's Matt Lee. We are taking the side of the Haitian people. We're taking the side uh, of, the side of the, you know, the guy who was named but hadn't taken office. We are taking the side of the Haitian people. Uh, this is a dialogue that has been ongoing between various Haitian political stakeholders. Yeah, whether you want to admit it or not, there was a shift in what you had been saying prior to that statement. You were all in support of the acting prime minister. And then, all of a sudden, on Saturday, you and the other members of the core group came out in support of uh, Mr. Henri. Matt, we are supporting the inclusive dialogue that Haiti's political actors are undertaking themselves. We're joined now by Monique Klaska, a Haitian pro-democracy advocate, usually based in Port-au-Prince. She worked for many years with the U.N., including at UNICEF in Haiti, for 15 years. She's joining us now from Washington, D.C., where she's just arrived from Port-au-Prince. Welcome to Democracy Now!, Monique. Uh, as you listen to this, this discussion in the United States about who will be the prime minister, who is the prime minister of Haiti after the assassination of the Haitian president, what are your thoughts and what are you calling for? Well, thank you. I'm very honored to be a, invited to Democracy Now. My thoughts in hearing, after hearing Ned a Price is, he ha they haven't talked to us. They haven't. How can what such arrogance of a State Department spokesman to say they are speaking on behalf of the Haitian people? No, I believe the Haitian people are able to speak for themselves. And we have been speaking for ourselves for the last three years during this crisis, demonstration after demonstration. How many demonstrators have been killed? No one listened to what we're saying. And now what we've been saying is, let us pause. Let us sit down and Haitians talk together come together and find a solution. It's not going to be like magic that it's going to be done. There is such polarization. There is such mistrust. But we must do this. It is not up to the United States State Department to tell us who should be the prime minister of Haiti. It is offensive. It should not be done. It is unacceptable. That is my reaction to this. And the Haitian people will not accept it. We will protest, we will fight, and we will continue to bear, to continue the fight to get a democracy, but not a democracy a la Jovenel, as Mr. Moise had said before his unfortunate, brutal, and untimely death. No, we will do it the way Haitians want to do it properly and, and in and a Monique, democratic way. Uh, Monique Klaska, I wanted to ask you why, in your sense, what what is your sense of why Claude Joseph agreed to hand over power uh, to uh, to uh, Mr. Henri, to Ariel Henri, uh, because it seems almost like who is who is less illegitimate because they were they were both uh, got their power from a uh, from uh, the the assassinated uh, uh, leader who was himself uh, questions about his uh, ability to hold power uh, at, uh, after not being uh, uh, after his term ended. They are all illegitimate. Jovenel Moïse was illegitimate. He held power in a very a, autocratic a way. He was a dictator. He should have left back in February. The Prime Minister Claude Joseph was illegitimate because he came from Jovenel Moïse. It's the same regime. Ariel Henry 
is illegitimate. They are all illegitimate. And that's what we're saying. Why did Ariel Henry decide to step aside? I have no idea. I have no idea who whispered anything in his ear. All we know is that before Jovenel Moise's corpse was even called, the, they were saying the U.S. and the U.N. were saying it should be Claude Joseph. Then a few days later, they change and say it should be Ariel Henry. Whatever is being cooked on the back burner somewhere in the U.S. Embassy, the U.S. State Department, or the U.N. AB new office of Madame Lalim, really has nothing to do with the Haitian people. We actually, at the commission that I'm honored to be part of, had several meetings where various groups of civil society came to discuss a draft agreement. And they agreed that the Constitution 1987 should be respected. They agreed that there should be a provisional president and a prime minister, and are about to set up a committee so that they can decide and propose names to be provisional president and provisional prime minister. And it has come from an elaborate, consensual a process over the last four months with political parties and civil society. That is what we are saying. It is up to the Haitian people. And we cannot continue this way to have our sovereignty just stepped upon, not only by the United States government, but also by the UN and also by the likes of Ariel Henry and Claude Joseph, who await instructions from the State Department and from the U.S. Embassy, rather than listen to us Haitian people. And this is what we're saying. Listen to our voices. That's what democracy is about. It's not taking something from the State Department, from a very arrogant spokesperson at the State Department who is saying, we're listening to the Haitian people. This is funny. The American embassy has not even called a commission. Not once have they called us to say, we would like to hear what you're saying. Yeah. No, this is unacceptable. Monique Lesko, we want to thank you for being with us. Of course, we're going to continue to follow this and also who murdered the Haitian president. Uh, Monique Lesko is a Haitian pro-democracy advocate who's just come up to Washington, usually in Port-au-Prince. She's a member of the Commission for a Haitian Solution to the Crisis.